Uh, first off, I think that there's just a couple of things that really stick out to me is that it doesn't matter, you know, your fundamentals, your technique, your experiences, all those things are really, really, really important. But there's nothing bigger than energy and toughness. And it's got to be there constantly. And I thought we, uh, once we got that figured out tonight, and, and we had some guys that figured it out from the beginning, but we didn't have a team of guys that figured it out from the beginning. And once they did, I thought we played pretty well. And, and there's, there's always going to be things that don't go right. I'll give you a great example. Yogi didn't have a great offensive night by any stretch. But you'd have never told it. You could have never been able to tell it. Now, I may feel a little different when we watch the film, but you would never be able to tell it by the way that he defended. That's a mature young man. I mean, th those are the kind of steps you got to have with your team. I mean, he just kept guarding and guarding and guarding. And, and that's, that, that's what's got to be there. It doesn't matter what your age is. It doesn't matter what your experience is. It's about understanding what wins, what works, and energy and toughness always does. And then, because we were playing against a team with a lot of energy and toughness, we were playing against an extremely well-coached team. And, and as we kept stressing to our team, uh, especially yesterday, that, that this is not a team, this is a program. Uh, Tim Miles got it going, and, and Saul Phillips has gone in there and just continued to just build on it and build on it. And, and we've got a lot of respect. I mean, I know firsthand because we lost to them when I was at Marquette, and we were, we were ranked fairly high. So to me, when you're going, when you're getting measured like that, you've got to bring it every night no matter who you're playing. And uh, uh, the second thing is, I know J.D. made this point with the bench scoring. That's cool, and I like that. I think that makes a lot of sense, but I don't look at very many of these guys like they're bench players. I look at it right now like we've got at least seven guys that could start and, and with more, with room to grow, with room to grow in that area. And uh, uh, without a doubt, I'd put Hunter in, in that group, and I would put Jeremy knocking on that door. And, and that's, if we're gonna be successful, we've gotta have a group of guys that there's really very little drop off when you go to the bench, because tonight, there's conventional, there's unconventional, and then there's what we did tonight. We just played. We played. It didn't become about matchups as much as it just became about putting guys out there and saying, let's go. Because you know what? We may need to do the same thing next Monday and Tuesday. We may need to do the same thing against Ball State and against North Carolina. It doesn't make any difference. We're not dealing with a stacked deck right now. When you look at our front line, so we just got to go play. And, and I thought they did a pretty good job with that. How much is... Has Remy improved from the end of last year to this year? Uh, considerable, considerable. Especially, I would say uh, the spring was good. When he went home and he worked with his old high school coach, Joe Rogers, and, and came back in June, uh, he was tremendous. And, and he's just been continuing to, to strive. So uh, he had a very good freshman year. I mean, there, we had an older team. I mean, there were there were... There weren't as many opportunities for him. He did a pretty good job with the opportunities that he had. And certainly, I mean, you can point to some really good uh, places that he played in the last year. But yeah, he's, he's earned the right. And, and there's a lot of room for improvement. I keep saying that. And I think tonight, uh, was he perfect from the field? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, it was because his defense was gone. <clears throat> you know, and, and you just, that's the hardest thing to get any player in, in basketball to understand is it's so much, and that's the energy and toughness part. That that's what defense is, you know, tenacity. I mean, and just continuing to be that way. And he got some tough assignments tonight and carried right over to his offense. What changed about him when he came back from working with his high school coach? Oh, I back? think I think he was good in the spring. I just think he stayed in the gym all the time. You know, I mean, and, and you know, here it's it's in the spring it's two hours and they play some pickup games. But you go home and you got the right coaching. I mean, there's no limits. And I thought he went home and he got his body even in better shape. And he came back here and he built on that. And uh, I mean, it wasn't like he had a bad spring, but I mean, he, when he came back, there was just a little bit different resolve to him, and, and it's been, it's been ongoing. Is that during first session, or like, when, where is that? No, he was spring? home, yeah, he was not here first session, back for the second session. But we had a good, we had a couple of weeks, how much did we have in the spring? I mean, we had a little less than a month in the spring, you know, when they were here. What did Zeller bring to this game today? I'm sorry. What did Zeller bring to the game? Well, you know what he did? He was sick tonight. And there's probably other times that he doesn't feel well, and I never hear about it. But, but uh, when he mentions that he's not feeling well uh, to the doctors and the trainers, he probably should have stayed home in bed. I mean, he's just got that kind of toughness level. And he didn't have a great defensive game, and he knows that, but, but he was hard to deal with on the offensive end.
And uh, I mean, again, there's another team that learns. He's pretty tough. You know, when you when you tangle up with him and you go into his body, he just keeps getting tougher and tougher with that. So I'd say that he did an outstanding job with with a lot of room for growth and improvement. And um, uh, that's the, that's the great thing about Cody. I mean, he understands it. And there's there's spends a lot of time at, at the things that he wants to get better at. Anytime he feels there's any little bit of a weakness in this or that, he's spending that extra time. And um, that's why he'll continue to, to, to work towards being uh, as good as he can possibly be. What more are you, you looking for? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? How do you think NDSU handled the pressure playing at assembly ball? I think they handled it very well because they have a very strong program. You know, we, we didn't think we were, we want to bring fatigue to the game. We didn't think we were going to come in and, and get them rattled, and, and they didn't. I mean, they, they worked hard and they moved and they've got a good team. You know, our biggest thing was that we didn't want to leave our post, men, our post defenders down there by themselves. But they started making shots, and, and number 12 did a good job, and number three did a good job, and, all, and we knew three would. And we knew Felt would be like, I mean, he's just a tremendous shooter. But it, it put a lot of pressure on us with the way that they moved the ball out of the post today. So uh, they handled the pressure, and, and we kept it on. But um, they're good. I mean, they're, they're a really good team. That they'll be, they'll be really hard to deal with, you know, with whoever they play against. What more do you want to see out of Christian that he hasn't brought to the first two? Well, I mean, Christian's biggest thing is consistency. I don't think that's any newsflash. I mean, he's got to be consistent with what he does. And tonight wasn't one of those nights, and uh, uh, the energy wasn't where it was needed to be. And you know what? Just just move on. But I mean, he'll bounce back. I mean, he's a senior, and uh, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, the consistency is the key. Do you think it has to do with the, the opponent that, that he's playing? I have no or? idea. Yeah, I have no idea. We, we, we won the game, and we just kept putting guys out there, and we played a lot of guys' minutes. I'm not trying to uh, – I'm going to analyze the film. I'm not going to analyze anything else than that, and we just keep moving forward. I'm a, you know, you always wear a psychology hat, but I like this basketball coaching hat, you know, a little bit better sometimes where you can just say, okay, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. Sure like having a bench that you can go to where you can put people in. Because, again, like I said at the beginning, it's they're not – I don't look at a lot of guys like they're bench players. We just only get to start five. How important is it right now with uh, with your lack of frontline depth to have Jeremy step up like he has? Oh, I think it's very important for a lot of reasons. It's very important for him. Um, and, and, and he's got to do. He took some made some strides tonight defensively. And um, uh, we can do a lot of things with him. He's, he's got to continue to uh, bring that emotional level to the game. And... and he will get neutralized. He's very, very smart. I mean, there, there's not one play here for a freshman. This is unique. I mean, Cody and uh, not Cody, Yogi and uh, Jeremy really have the stuff we're trying to run down. And that that's we don't have as much in, but like today we put five new things in. It's just the way it is. And and because we we put a lot of late game stuff in today because we just hadn't done it yet. So that the, our practices and even on game day are a little bit like that right now. Jeremy will peak if his emotional level doesn't continue to rise the way it needs to. But we knew that when we recruited him. He knew we knew that when we recruited him. And he knows that we we're going to keep pulling it out of him until it's there. And, and as that grows, he'll grow as a player, without a doubt, because he can stuff that statue, can he? I mean, he's always been able to do that. But he's got to be able to impact winning on both ends of the floor. And tonight and last Friday night, he did. I tell you how deep. Well, how do you pull that out of him? How do you, you just work at it day by day? I mean, it's, if it was if it was easy, it would already be there. And it wasn't like he was well coached. I mean, he was very well coached, and and uh, it was part of the growth process. And so you, your your team goes through a growth process. It, it, he's like a since you asked the question, I mean, he's really like a it, it, it's like the epitome of where we're at. We we don't have an identity yet because our mindset and our consistency is not where it needs to be. Once your mindset and your consistency of how you do it, now you start to see, okay, this is who we really are. This is what our identity is as a team. I mean, we can we can want it, we can expect it, we can look at what we need it to be, but until it really gets absorbed. Well, it's the same thing, you know, with him right now. I mean, he's getting better and better, but I mean, it's, his job is to get the most out of every day, and my job, and our job as coaches, is to never think it's good enough. And, and that's how they end up leaving, making a lot of money someday. You know, and that's, that's what we've got to be able to do, you know, with him. So it's, it's really, it comes down to day by day and uh, just keep changing that personality on the court. And, I, and he will. I have no doubts. And we wouldn't have signed him.
You talked a lot in the, uh, the offseason about defense allowing you to create offense and pace, I guess, and to get going, especially against teams that didn't want you to run. It's tonight pretty much the perfect example of that because you got 25 off the turnovers and were able to break Yeah, I think that was good. And we haven't even, we haven't even uh, scratched the surface on the defensive playbook of things we want to do with trapping, with pressures, with zone pressures, um, the switching. We haven't even, we haven't even gotten to that yet. And, and uh, our getting up and playing 94 feet is getting better. But until we get the, until we get the, the depth on the front line, <coughs> until we can play those guys where they can, where they can learn that that, that that part of the playbook is probably gonna gonna have to remain on ice a little bit, you know. And once we once we get it moving in the right direction, I think we're really going to be able to be uh, good defensively with changing things up and and creating more pressures and creating <coughs> um, um, opportunistic situations that maybe they don't see coming. You know, and, and right now we're man to man, probably ninety eight percent of the game tonight. Last question. Tom, what did it mean to have uh, Phil Garrett? Oh, I think, it was, I think it was excellent. And we talked about that with our team today. And then I had Tim Buckley talk about it because he had worked with Bill Garrett Jr. at Iowa. And uh, you, you don't want to lose when you're honoring greatness. You don't want to lose ever. But I mean, it's like, I think having the Garrett family here is like having a 87 championship team here last year. You, want, you, you don't want to do anything to spoil the night because you know the fans are going to respond in a great way. You know it's a big deal, and, and that's so important. That's so important. Well, you want your team to play well, too. So I think any time uh, I was well aware of Bill Garrett long before I ever got to Indiana, plus I'd known Bill Garrett Jr. for some time, you know, when he was a high school coach and a college coach. So um, bottom line is that that's a really big deal, and it, and it sounded like it went really well. Okay, so thank you. Thanks.